Muy buenos días, sean todos y todas bienvenidas a esta segunda edición del ciclo de intercambios de experiencias para la agricultura familiar. Mi nombre es María Ignacia Haddad, especialista Arabic and Portuguese that you will be able to access uh, from the bottom part of the screen where you can select uh, the language of your preference. This activity falls within the framework of the efforts of uh, the FAO to support uh, the UN Decade for Family Agriculture at uh, uh, world level through the technical platform for family farming facilitated by the regional office of the FAO for Latin America and the Caribbean. The technical regional platform is a global initiative facilitated by us um, through the, the different TSU um, and which seeks to the objective of generating the exchange and of experiences and dialogues for technical innovation. This uh, series of uh, technical dialogues uh, seek uh, to, or the fundamental objective is to promote uh, cooperation and the exchange of experiences with uh, referring to the main pillars of the global action plans for the decade and the priorities established in Latin America and the Caribbean uh, set forth in the Santiago de Chile Charter. This uh, dialogue then is established in order to share lessons learned and challenges that we have found in the development of policies for the strengthening of family uh, farming in its different spheres of action. The first uh, uh, version of this uh, series of discussions held in 2023 focused on uh, the family farming registries, and that is presently available in our webpage, where you can also gain access uh, to the recordings of this second uh, cycle of exchanges. During the second session, uh, the discussion has focused on uh, access uh, to markets for family farming, specifically via public procurement, uh, which is a key aspect uh, related to the strengthening of the sector and also the mechanisms and tools that enable us to guarantee that these actions take into consideration and acknowledge the diversity of products of family farming and their cultural wealth uh, and also connecting with the different development uh, strategies and the strategies for inclusive uh, rural transformation leaving no one behind during the first session of this uh, dialogue we held an initial dialogue on how the different mechanisms and the initiatives uh, for public procurement that exist to promote uh, institutional technological and social innovations highlighting the role played by the public procurement mechanisms in this process of the social construction of markets. We shared uh, reflections and experiences uh, focused on a first a global outlook on the first uh, lessons learned to, through the incorporation of family farming in public procurement mechanisms and how the sustainable inclusion of family farming in markets uh, via these programs is uh, directly connected with the capability to face up uh, to the challenges that global development agendas uh, put forward. The second session held uh, last month uh, focused on uh, the necessary instruments for the effective implementation of uh, public procurement uh, initiatives uh, from family farming. And we explored the tools developed in different cases that have enabled an adequate management of these programs via the experience of our panelists. We also discussed in depth about uh, the importance of these tools uh, being linked uh, to an enabling environment uh, for the social social productive inclusion of family farming, where the component associated associated to public procurement is set within a wider ranging context to strengthen the sector, and that also requires an intersectorial and interinstitutional coordination for its effective operation. In this third, third session that we will be holding today, we will focus on a much more specific configuration of public procurement from family farming, which are the school meals programs. We have an excellent and, and varied uh, set of panelists that, that will share with us the different mechanisms that enable uh, to connect uh, family farmers with these programs, enhancing the supply of healthy and nutritious food. Before we begin with these cases, I would like to remind you that following the intervention, so we will be holding a brief uh, session aimed at a, a short Q&A session that will enable us uh, to discuss uh, the cases in greater depth. And so please take note of any questions 
queries that you may wish to present to our presenters and share them via the chat. I would also like to remind you that we have interpretation in English, Spanish, French, Arabic and Portuguese in order to facilitate uh, the dialogue and interaction. And uh, of course, you can select uh, your preferred language in the bottom part of the screen. To begin with this third session, we have the pleasure of uh, having the participation of Inia Pereira from the Brazilian Cooperation Agency and Naisla Beloso, who is a regional coordinator of the school meals uh, um, agenda of the FAO in Latin America and the Caribbean, and they will share with us the experience of the Network of Sustainable School Meals Network, uh, and the acronym is RAES, which is a strategy promoted by the government of Brazil so that uh, it can jointly produce uh, uh, answers to the challenges of school meals under the principle of uh, the human right uh, to adequate uh, food. May you both be very welcome. It's a great pleasure to have you here with us. And you have 20 minutes for your presentation. And now uh, mention in the chat uh, when you have five minutes uh, left. Please go ahead. Thank you, Maria. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to participate in this event, and I would like to say to you that the Brazilian Cooperation Agency, uh, which belongs to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Brazil, is a an integral part of the Sustainable School Meals Network, RISE, an initiative that we will be presenting to you later on, and that Nashla will uh, talk to you about that. Uh, I have the pleasure of participating in the inauguration of this event, uh, on this uh, third cycle of technology dialogues for family farming in order to talk about public procurement from family farmers. This is a technical regional platform for family farming that is related to the UN decade for family farming. I would like to first of all greet my colleague Luis Deduski. I can't see him on the screen, but his name was in the agenda. He is uh, the um, officer on school meals policy. I would also like to greet Nashla, uh, a dear colleague whom I have worked with for many years on this issue, the regional coordinator of the regional agenda for school meals uh, for Latin America and the Caribbean of, at the FAO office. Uh, and and their colleague, Karine Santos, who has been a partner ever since the beginning of this cooperation, together with the FAO in all cooperation projects, there, uh, South-South cooperation projects on school meals. I would also like to greet all participants and uh, speakers. I would like to first of all say to you that the participation of the Brazilian government in this event seeks to strengthen the importance of the promotion of the exchange of uh, good practices, an issue that will be discussed today. South-South cooperation, a sector in which which I work as a Brazilian cooperation agency. In other words, we form part of the coordination of that task, and we also share good practices between the countries from the global south. And uh, our entity coordinates uh, the technical cooperation and humanitarian system in Brazil at international level. Our entity is the entity that uh, relates to different aspects of south south, and including south-south cooperation. And I would like to say to you that food security in Brazil is a priority goal for Lula's government and adequate uh, school meals is a fundamental ally in order to struggle against uh, hunger. In that sense, it is fundamentally important uh, to share successful experiences on public procurement from family farmers, especially uh, when we talk about those geared towards uh, school meal programs. As many of you are aware, the, the RAES, our network, uh, was created as a proposal by the Brazilian government uh, via a a BCR entity and the National Fund for the Development of Education uh, together with the FAO so that uh, we can uh, respond uh, to the uh, summons of the uh, UN decade for school meals. And since 2018, 26 countries in our region have taken part in activities uh, coordinated by RAIS, including seminars, exchanges, uh, training sessions, and other exchange uh, uh, formulas in order to exchange good practices and knowledge. 
Based on this major global challenge, which is the struggle against hunger, a challenge that has been expanded as uh, following the 2019 pandemic, with this, that had significant uh, impacts on food security and also on the economic and sustainable and the economic sustainability. Riots has supported countless uh, experiences to exchange experiences involving the promotion of school meals, as is the case of public procurement from family farmers. In consequence, we understand that RISE is definitely a regional organization that promotes and strengthens the institutional and human capacities in order to enable the continuity of a solidarity and a joint effort aimed at the changes that we wish to make under the umbrella of a healthy of health or the right to healthy food, which is a human right. Uh, last year, the government of Brazil, via uh, AIC, AOC and the FAO, has uh, renewed its commitment of an additional cycle for uh, related to school meals in our region. And this uh, new initiative foresees uh, the creation of a strategic regional agenda for school meals uh, in Latin America and the Caribbean with a, a time span between 2024 and 2027 in order to strengthen the desire of our region in accordance with the the school meals guideline through the consolidation of RAES of our network. And finally, I would like to highlight that the Brazilian government has entered into the into a commitment uh, via a coalition in favor of school meals, which is an initiative that was led uh, by the French government initially and also by the Finnish government. And, and subsequently, the Brazilian government has joined this initiative. And now we have become co-leaders of this initiative that brings together many countries around the issue of strengthening school meals. I would also like uh, uh, to mention or to highlight that in 2024, when the Brazilian government to hold the pro-temporary uh, chair of uh, G20, we will launch, uh, following uh, the meeting of heads of states and governments in Rio in November, the Global Alliance Against Hunger and Poverty, an initiative that seeks uh, to reinforce uh, all the instruments and existing formulas in order to indeed struggle against this very important issue, which is uh, hunger and poverty. And in this sense, uh, school meals uh, uh, are part of this discussion, and likewise, a strengthening of school of uh, family farming. I would like to thank you all for the possibility ability of participating in this event. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Linio. And now I would like to continue. Thank you, Linio, for such a good introduction. And I'll try to supplement this uh, with data. But I would also like to thank uh, Pedro Barreto for the invitation. And uh, there are many issues uh, that uh, uh, are uh, common to us all. So it's a great pressure to be present here for us. This is very meaningful because the countries uh, that uh, are persevering will be able to receive the support of uh, all parties in order to support this issue of public procurement. Maria and all colleagues, I thank you. The presenters, uh, Karine, uh, Alida, Gelia, all the interpreters present here, because this is a very important moment uh, for us all when it comes to school meals. I would like to talk a little bit more about Jai, understanding that uh, this initiative plays a, a very important role in terms of uh, contributing and providing support so that this issue of public procurement, which is very challenging, so that as from the very onset of um, sustainable schools that we developed uh, uh, as a methodology since 2012, this has been the most uh, challenging component. And what we, mu and we must certainly pay attention to this and acquires uh, even greater relevance today because this is a, a gigantic opportunity to strengthen our work 
in order to face uh, the challenge of uh, climate change. And therefore, this is all a little bit discouraging because more farmers uh, suffer as a result of uh, the effects of climate change. Uh, and probably school meals also suffer as, uh, as, as a result of climate change. And therefore, we need to coordinate efforts and do everything that we can in order to uh, support uh, uh, the people, uh, the family farmers, and to strengthen this as a mechanism in order to uh, to face everything that happens as a result of these uh, climate uh, changes. RAES, uh, therefore, has uh, been a network that uh, works with different countries, showing that we are a network, and this provides us uh, uh, with a perspective of strengthening, of sharing regional experiences. And we know that this can uh, strengthen uh, decision making when it comes uh, to the policies implemented by countries. So this was established within the framework of the decade. It was created in 2018. And it involved uh, the support of all our colleagues, uh, colleagues uh, from governments, uh, from the FAO, from academia, from universities, uh, from other initiatives that uh, participate and support all our actions at a regional level. This uh, network seeks to promote uh, dialogue between um, countries, and as mentioned, we want to build a regional agenda in order to strengthen, to increasingly strengthen the programs and school meals programs in our region. And that today hopes uh, to become, uh, to, to be able to highlight uh, the needs and the national consensus in terms of the development of uh, these programs. And for this, uh, we promote uh, the institutional, uh, the, the increasing institutional uh, framework of these programs, so that involves uh, laws, regulations, and other aspects in order to provide uh, greater sustainability to these programs as uh, state uh, uh, programs, and not only uh, the program of a specific administration. And here, I would like to mention that uh, this month in June, we have a law on school meals uh, in Brazil that has existed for 15 years, and that is, has been a very important reference point uh, for us in Brazil, not only at a national level, at the level of uh, our Brazilian territory, catering for 40 million students, as Karim mentioned. Uh, but uh, this, uh, at a regional level, has also involved an interaction, a reference of uh, a practice conducted uh, through the Alliance uh, supervised uh, by at an international level and has shown that a country with uh, the territory that Brazil has and with all the regional challenges that we face, it is possible to have a school meals program uh, with the technical regulations, with uh, um, adequate uh, school meals and so on, all these aspects that we will discuss. And so we uh, we refer specifically to or pay enormous attention to this uh, school meals law in Brazil that is now 15 years, uh, which has been in existence for 15 years. And we have uh, worked uh, in uh, different uh, areas, uh, and we, but we seek uh, the universalization of the coverage of students, so the supply of adequate uh, menus, uh, actions of uh, food and nutritional education involving the participation of the community, and of course, involving the public procurement uh, from local family farmers as a preference, uh, and preferably direct uh, procurement uh, from uh, these farmers. And for that purpose, we have held many training sessions, we have held events, exchange of experiences, we have uh, uh, capacity building, we have disseminated information. 
good practices and so on in our platform, which is in three languages. And that has involved, uh, in addition to the support of uh, uh, ABC and SBS. We have also uh, received the support from uh, CELAC, uh, CARICOM. We have also whole uh, dialogues uh, with School Meals Coalition, with the Global Food Hub, with Global Child Nutrition Foundation that also operates at a global level. And we want uh, to uh, not only be active in these countries, uh, not only in 26 countries, but in all 33 countries of the region via their membership of this platform. We have uh, achieved uh, many aspects. Uh, the law is now 15 years old, as I said, and cooperation with Latin America and uh, the Caribbean uh, from as from ABC is also 15 years old uh, this year. But that has also involved challenges because we know that we still have uh, close to 170 million students in our region, but uh, we are all only able to uh, cover 80 million of those uh, students. And so we are able to cater for less than half of the universe that we have to reach. On the other hand, we have also increased significantly the budget. Uh, according to data from 16 countries, we have 14 countries uh, that have uh, structured uh, social participation and uh, also institutions working on school meals. And that is important because it's not easy to maintain these committees uh, active and to keep people involved with this issue. And uh, the methodology of sustainable schools is one of the ones that we have adopted, which has different comp six components, as I said, uh, and which also includes public procurement. And that shows that it is possible via, uh, as a result of more than 9 million uh, family farmers to provide food for more than uh, 23,000 schools uh, with a total of 1.6 million schools. And, I'm, uh, we, and this is uh, data uh, from uh, 20. 21. But we believe that it is much bigger today, and we have uh, the capability of more, of more than 40,000 people uh, uh, with uh, this law in uh, school meals law in six countries, and the Dominican Republic and El Salvador with uh, bills uh, in their congresses. We have over 40 uh, technical sessions uh, for, for exchange. We have been uh, meeting with uh, forty, with, with nearly forty activities and technical missions uh, twice a year. So it's a specific uh, possibility to allow these countries to progress. And uh, from uh, the sustainable school uh, feeding uh, network, these are some of the al technical elements we like to emphasize. We have four betters in the FAU. Uh, better uh, production, better nutrition, better environment, and better life. And the integration uh, from from national uh, FAOs and, and, and governments with the four betters, it's an important source uh, to produce content and support, especially for these the topic of public procurement. Everything we do will strengthen the people in the various uh, countries, uh, and we should work to strengthen these together. We don't have time. The climate change is already here, and uh, that means we need emerging, specific, uh, clear actions. Uh, uh, that's why alliances uh, are so much uh, successful. We need to strengthen the intersectoral work and uh, in public procurement, we already know that it is not possible to do we, can, we cannot do anything without uh, an intersectoral approach, agriculture, healthcare. I mean, you will see the experience of Peru that we have the privilege of being part or being part of 
and uh, all that uh, task has uh, meant that the uh, that has meant uh, the intersectoral work has been articulated among the various uh, agents and stakeholders in uh, school meals program. Nashla, you only have three minutes left. I'm 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 already closing. Uh, we need to exchange our experiences among country. We need to offer technical advice. We have to share information, put you in contact. And then our dialogue should strengthen decision-making. I, I was uh, reading in a paper we were producing and we uh, stay there an experience uh, in the Dominican Republic and uh, just trying to change uh, using different uh, techniques uh, taken from Brazil and from the rules and the Brazilian rules and regulation, uh, we are trying to reduce uh, sugars. We're decreasing uh, these content in the whole uh, food production process. So we're, I'd like to commend and Mr. Castro for the initiative has meant that the decision, such a strong decision making, such a difficult decision making that uh, deals with the conflicts of interest uh, have been very successful. And this has uh, meant uh, uh, the, the decision making, it's uh, made uh, through a regional uh, movement. So I believe this uh, working as a network helps us to pushing uh, the necessary changes in the country. So I'd like to commend every country as part of this initiative. Pedro, Maria, everyone. Uh, we are a platform available to share information and that uh, we are here together to strengthen all the actions uh, that uh, will make a public procurement from family farming will bring a huge uh, regional challenge. That besides producing, it means strengthening nutrition for each one of our peoples, especially our students. So we are here, and uh, we want to be with you in the dialogue. This is uh, our uh, communication channels. Join us and uh, try to use uh, these uh, channels. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Nashla and Plinio, for this interesting presentation. We are pleased uh, having uh, your work experience. Uh, from uh, uh, this uh, FAO Brazil cooperation started 15 years ago. So well, there we have over half of the regional countries. Let me say that the importance of international cooperation, exchange of experiences and best practices in order to carry out these uh, programs it's really interesting uh, what you said on how uh, RISE was created. This is an intersectoral, interinstitutional articulation from different countries enabling uh, the various agencies involved in this program with uh, multiple stakeholders to focus on fighting hunger and poverty. It will adjust uh, these uh, solutions to the realities and context of uh, multiple countries and territories to strengthen family farming and uh, school meals program. It, it is uh, uh, the key that the new challenges uh, are increasing pressure, such as uh, climate change. It's important to understand the multiple experiences from countries. And, and what we said in the last session, the enabling tools for these type of programs, it's important to 
destacar que una to emphasize de, that uh, school meals or law requires an institutional architecture and policy tools that will in, enable successful implementation. So thank you once again, Nashla and Plinio, for your presentations. And uh, uh, now on to our second presentation. It's a public procurement experience from Brazil, like Nashla said, but now with uh, Karim Santos. Uh, Brazil is one of the pioneers in Latin America and in the world in uh, setting up these type of programs. And we have uh, Karim. She's the general coordinator of the National School Feeding Program of Brazil. Welcome, Karim. It's a pleasure having today with having us uh, having you with us today. I will let you know when you have about three minutes left. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. First of all, let me thank ABC uh, for being in this project for already 15 years. We have a Brazilian problem with this. It's been in place for 69 years. But uh, it's been 15 years in the law, which makes uh, mandatory the distribution of uh, food. So this uh, meeting is uh, pretty consistent with what, uh, what we are doing in the school uh, meals uh, program, which has been in place since 2023. Now, these are the big numbers of our national program. Let me emphasize here two specific uh, aspects of the program. For instance, the, it's covering the whole territory, over 150,000 schools out of 40 million students, and the Brazilian government used uh, municipal, state uh, uh, organizations sharing with them uh, uh, 50 million, 5.5 billion reais. But how much is going to family uh, family farming? We have a 1.6 billion reais. On the right-hand side, we have 40,000 and family farmers with the possibility of offering their products uh, uh, locally or Brazilian public schools. The number of students we're serving, it's 40 million students in the public network and, and primary, uh, primary education. So we offer nearly 50 million meals per day. So we have a healthy, nutritious uh, food, free from agrotoxic, uh, natural uh, foods, which are offered by uh, family farming alone. So this is an interesting aspect, how family farming will benefit so many students in terms of the food and nutritional uh, security, the increase of, of these uh, supply of food should respect uh, local cultures. Our territory is uh, quite big. Therefore, in the central region of Brazil, in the central uh, west, uh, we don't have the same uh, breakfast as we do in the northern Brazil because they used uh, they use azaí, which is a very specific fruit. Our breakfast in the Brazilian capital, which is where I'm right now. So family farming offers the possibility of food diversity, guaranteed in the schools. Now, through family farming, we can uh, rescue the knowledge of uh, traditional communities uh, 
uh, indigenous peoples. I mean, the priorities offered by the government for the procurement of uh, food is to the indigenous uh, communities and quilombolas. They have the preference uh, when selling uh, schools. So these are locally produced uh, food, preserving nature, diversity, the, the genetic diversity of food, as well as the possibility of selling uh, um, schools, uh, Brazilian schools, and we're strengthening the public circuit of production. Local farmers are producing very close to schools, and therefore the preference to sell either municipal or state network, thereby strengthening and disseminating the disseminating jobs and income for local local communities. By late 2023, Brazil published uh, an amendment to this program, which included the possibility that when rural individual families um, are selling, these payments should be made 50% to women. We have a huge number of women working on family farming, and now they will be a priority in receiving those resources from the selling of products to schools. These are some of the opportunities given the family farming scenario, which is focused on market of family uh, of uh, school meal because we have a legal a robust a legal framework there is a, a law for the procurement of uh, sustainable um, family farming. At least 30% of the resources from the federal government should go to family farming uh, product. We are encouraging the sustainable development of those areas. And that will strengthen uh, family farmers because offer priority to this agenda. The groups are organized into cooperatives, associations. They can. Um, it's important to say that in Brazil we have uh, nearly 30% of family farming, uh, but also uh, which is a rule which is which is supported by a regulation. But now we are trying to increase this 30%. We have uh, bills of 40, even 50%, considering that 15 years after the enactment of the law, maybe we can move forward to the next uh, level, at least double this procurement. And uh, this is a great opportunity because the procurement process in Brazil, meaning procurement of products in general, as well as services, that has to do with the very uh, st uh, strict uh, rules and regulations for public procurement. But for family farming, we have our own law with the possibility of having a much streamlined process uh, through a public bid. We have a document reporting on this. You may read this document later on. But after 15 years, with so many uh, developments and opportunities for family farming, we still have certain challenges. And let me share with you only three of them. So, expanding the procurement of products in Brazil, we have uh, 5,500 municipalities uh, using family farming, but it's a small number of municipalities not buying from family farmers. They cannot reach this 30% uh, uh, threshold. We have to move forward. We need to improve participation of traditional people and communities. Thus, we have to make uh, access available for the so-called quilombolas living in the coastal area. We have 
big farmers over there, and we have to also strengthen uh, female farmers. We have to uh, amend uh, this uh, network. So at least 50% of our procurement, and that should uh, focus on women. Now, this last point on women, we are preparing the detail of how this procurement will take place, and that's a challenge, a big challenge. I mean, controlling in a certain way the payment of those amounts to family uh, to female family farmers. The national program faces the challenge of, of evolving. This is uh, the monitoring by the Brazilian government on... Uh, Pro, uh, procurement from family farming. This is a 2009 uh, law. The first execution, which was in 2011, which went from 0.08% or 8% of procurement. Now, in the first year, when uh, Brazil reached over 30%, which was the minimum threshold, that was 2018. Well, national domestic procurement reached 35%. Out of the volume of resources that the federal government has allocated to states and municipalities, 35% was allocated to uh, small farmers, either individuals or through organizations, cooperatives. In 2020, 2021, we had a big drop because of the pandemic. Our colleagues from, from Latin America and, and, and the Caribbean will remember that we had to make the law more flexible. We uh, circulated uh, food kits as part of the program, but we never reached the minimum threshold of 30%. And today, with our latest uh, information or data in 2022, we have reached 45% of procurement from family farmers, which does not mean that every municipality is buying at least 30%. We have a universe of nearly 100 municipalities with lots of difficulties buying from uh, family farmers. But we have certain municipalities buying 100% uh, from family farmers. And uh, that's the recent information we have on procurement. But for all these to become a reality, it is important for us to execute or the government to manage these uh, different features. The, the Nashla talked about the articulation of partners, uh, the, the makeup of the managing committee and the consulting uh, group where we have uh, an association of uh, social engagement and government agents to rethink the policy of uh, food or school meals. Understanding in this group, uh, we have uh, representatives from family farming, from indigenous peoples, uh, uh, women farmers. We have uh, multiple um, uh, members. Our alliances, institutional alliances, we have co technical cooperation agreements with the several ministries, social development, for instance, acting on food and nutritional security. The Ministry of Health tell us uh, what's the best in terms of uh, food supply, thinking of healthy, and uh, uh, the Ministry of uh, uh, Agricultural Development responsible for farmers. We have a great articulation with all these ministries and the last three points, training, monitoring and, and, and assessment and sharing of best practices. Those are initiatives we have together with universities, which are which collaborate with us, 24 universities or federal institutes or throughout Brazil to act on these last three points. I'm running out of time. Let me I'll say that, 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 yeah, I know I have five minutes. The importance of uh, the intersectoral approach. By way of an analogy, for the national program to be a reality at all levels, at the federal, uh, state, uh, and municipality level, we need this huge uh, machine. We 
This is a process of the preparation of a policy involving public health, family farming, a specific budget for the civil, the civil society as a representative of the execution and uh, a monitoring agencies in terms of the execution. Now, let me emphasize here that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs is helping us in this, this technical cooperation process with our uh, colleague countries, uh, specifically in Latin America and the Caribbean, by way of uh, as, as a strategy to guarantee the efficiency of the program. Let me emphasize social technologies. Farmers may receive uh, follow-up and uh, guiding uh, from uh, government as to what to produce and a, a, a farming map, articulation among stakeholders, public transparency, which is important in Brazil. We have uh, uh, available data on family and, and uh, on uh, school meals and uh, virtual platforms for agricultural mapping, technical assistance for farmers which is uh, done by the Ministry of uh, Agricultural Development. In closing, let me offer you the possibility to have access to this uh, sort of guideline from uh, from uh, procure, for, for, for procurement, uh, showing lots of information and steps so that procurement from family farming becomes a reality in school meals. It has to do with procurement, preparation of different menus, uh, documents, uh, and I believe this is a good material for you to learn. I'd like to thank you again. Uh, for your attention and the uh, policy of the Brazilian government is, uh, is uh, open for you and I'm ready to take your questions. I'd like to thank you for this uh, such a long-lasting association in, in, in Latin American and Caribbean countries. So thank you, Maria. Thank you, Karim, for your excellent uh, presentation. I would also like to congratulate you for the 15 years of the passing of that law that you mentioned, where the distribution of food becomes mandatory. As you mentioned, this uh, implies providing boys and girls uh, healthy foods, uh, free of uh, uh, agro-toxic uh, food, uh, safe food, and all this provided by family farmers. The presentation is also very interesting because it shows how it shows the different benefits of this program, not only limited to food-related aspects, but also to respect for territorial identity, the recognition of traditional communities, uh, the preservation of nature and the diversity of food and likewise the strengthening of the short circuits that as we know have an important impact upon uh, making rural societies and the territories much more dynamic uh, the strengthening of employment uh, and the income of local for local communities and also incorporating very innovating tools uh, that also enable the empowerment of rural women what is also very interesting is how you connect all these links, all these achievements with uh, uh, the objectives uh, that highlight uh, the relevance of monitoring systems, of uh, uh, permanently reviewing these uh, policies to determine how these programs are uh, aligned with the objectives that institutions established, uh, searching for a better, for an improvement of their services so that they can achieve uh, more ambitious objectives. Uh, thank you very very much, uh, Karin, uh, once again for your presentation. I would like to remind you all that following the interventions, there will be a Q&A session that will enable us uh, to discuss uh, these cases in greater depth. So we invite you to take uh, note of any question or query that you may have and to share that uh, via the chat. Likewise, I would like to again uh, uh, remind you that we have uh, interpretation into different languages and you may select uh, 
your preferred language in the bottom part of the screen. To continue with this uh, session, we now have uh, Yena Jacob, who is the national advisor for the economic initiatives of producers of uh, the rural confederation of uh, Burkina Faso. This experience, of course, does not come from Latin America, uh, but he will provide us uh, with a new perspective so that we may get to know of their experience. Uh, thank you very much. May you be welcome. Mr. Jacob, you have 15 minutes for your presentation, and we will certainly uh, remind you when you have five minutes left. Uh, you have the floor, sir. Thank you for inviting us uh, to share uh, your experience on uh, school meals. We have 15 minutes, and so I'll push ahead quickly, because uh, if there are questions, I certainly want to be able to answer them. Can you hear me? Can you hear me well? Okay, d'accord. Donc, merci bien. Thank you very much. Before I talk about our experience, I would like to talk to you a little bit about uh, the CPF, which is uh, the Rural Confederation of FASO, which is a structure that was created in November 2002 for farmers in order to defend uh, the interests of farmers. And presently, it uh, involves uh, uh, 16 uh, federations. Uh, we have federations uh, for uh, maize, soya, um, different products. We have several federations. Uh, the CPF has an administration uh, council uh, comprised of seven members uh, and also spaces for coordination devoted uh, to women. We have uh, also the entity for young people and other structures that participate in this. And their vision is to have family, uh, durable, productive, competitive family farming capable of guaranteeing access to land, the security of the territory for all categories of producers, uh, ensuring the security of food sovereignty and security. That is the objective. Well, that is a vision of CPF. We are members of the National Committee for Family Farming, the CNAF, in Burkina Faso, and presently we have an action plan for the UN decade for family farming, and which and in September we will have an, a national action plan conducted by CPF in Burkina Faso. Now we'll talk to you as from the experience that we have had with regards to public procurement, we must acknowledge that in Burkina Faso, to talk to you a little bit about the context, in 2008, uh, you may remember that we faced a crisis in Burkina Faso. So that the state uh, could uh, provide support uh, to local producers. And as from there, uh, the state uh, made a contribution and uh, we and, and the state provided uh, equipment and also funded uh, credits for producers. And uh, all these actions uh, contributed to our national production. Regrettably, Producers faced uh, difficulties uh, in order to reach markets, and they were unable to sell because there is uh, the production is quite significant, but there were many procedures to make this flow, and therefore producers and civil society organizations organized procedures. Uh, they also uh, uh, called upon uh, emphasizing national production, and therefore uh, the idea was to conduct a public procurement from family farmers, and thus the state adopted uh, certain measures in order to accompany producers. There is a structure which is called uh, SONAGES, uh, the National Society for uh, Stocks uh, managed by the state uh, so that uh, procurement may be made to these uh, family farmers and there were also policies were also adopted by the state in order to favor 
the consumption of uh, these products at a national level. There were text uh, laws, decrees, and the latest is indeed one that was approved in uh, January 2020, implying that uh, all schools could uh, focus uh, their procurement on local production. Now, what are the activities that were conducted by the CPF uh, within this framework? Uh, well, uh, discussions were held with public institutions, especially with SONAGES, uh, the Ministry of National Education, uh, the Ministry in Charge of Humanitarian Action, uh, the Armed Forces, uh, the different uh, organizations within hospitals, universities, and, and so on, and other institutions such as PAM, CRS, so that these structures could purchase uh, products uh, from family farmers. After this request, uh, some results were achieved, and we have we find uh, that we have a members in the federation of uh, student students in Burkina that have been signing contracts with the Ministry of Agriculture in Burkina Faso to support vulnerable families at the level of rice uh, and at the level of rice production that is provided because we provide uh, rice every year in uh, school um, uh, canteens. Uh, and we have all these members that in one way or the other provide uh, products uh, to schools uh, to the, and to the different structures of public institutions. We also strengthened uh, the capability of members, uh, for example, uh, training on uh, regulations and quality because it, to be able to participate in institutional markets, uh, food must be quality, must involve quality products, and therefore we provided training in agricultural products, uh, how to participate or how to create uh, the different uh, information sheets and how to participate in the public bids. So we also invited members to build uh, stores in order to um, store their products and produce quality. Uh, products with UMOA and with the French Committee for International Security. We also supported members uh, to search financing from, institu from financial institutions, and we also held workshops in order to analyze the situation of members when it comes to when it came to public procurement, and also. Um, uh, experts in uh, bringing together these stakeholders and uh, supply and uh, demand of uh, agricultural products. And this enabled an, uh, us to find solutions uh, to the issue of local products. Some experience, some results that we obtained between 2017 and 2023, well, the state transferred uh, 130, more than 132 billion uh, to the communes in order to buy uh, products uh, for their own school meals. Based on this amount, uh, there were one, more than 177,000 tons uh, that were mobilized in uh, these communes uh, for school meals in 2022. Uh, partners such as PAM CRS and the uh, Children's Funds mobilized uh, uh, more than 11 thousand uh, uh, tons uh, for a value of more than four billion francs. Uh, the food uh, uh, consumed in these school meals is cereal uh, rice, which represents 88.75% of the products that were purchased. We also find oil, 98%, and milk, 100%. Uh, those are the products uh, that are purchased uh, by communes in order uh, to provide uh, that to students uh, via school meals. Now, uh, there were also some uh, limitations uh, at the level of public procurement. For example, the inexistence of a law on school meals. So that is a point. A national strategy, yes, uh, but there is still no law that truly regulates uh, uh, the issue of school meals. We have uh, little multi-sectorial coordination between stakeholders. Uh, there is a late uh, provision of educational structures. In October, we begin by, with schools, but in uh, January or February, uh, that is when communes receive resources in order to purchase uh, these uh, this food. Uh, we also find uh, the rise in prices, the non-coverage of needs for the school year. 
which is nine months uh, long. Uh, the funds that are transferred only cover four or five months of that uh, uh, school year, and therefore these uh, school meals don't operate as uh, we would uh, like. Now, some impacts are linked uh, to this uh, for uh, school meals. At the level of education, we realized that uh, public procurement ensures access uh, uh, and the maintenance uh, of uh, girls at school. We found that the number of girls in schools is uh, far greater than the number of boys in schools. It also improves the quality of education and provides a full effect uh, to the right uh, to food. It also improves uh, the indicators for education. It ensures nutritional education and it favors the frequency and enables a better performance by students at the level of parents, of children's parents. This is an important tool in order to struggle against children's malnutrition at a social and economic level. This provides uh, quality local products for schools of the communes of Burkina. It also develops the local economy, generating employment and uh, increasing fiscal revenues by the different uh, collectives, in increasing uh, the actions of producers uh, and uh, thus a uh, greater added value among the different stakeholders. Uh, this improves uh, the revenues of, of agricultural producers and it also increases local production. We also find the young people who are interested in working on the land and it is public procurement that indeed enables them to join this production. It also supports uh, uh, safe uh, food, it in improves the nutrition of students and struggles against uh, poverty and, food and, Im and improves uh, food security among families. Now, in terms of the stakeholders involved in the operation of these uh, school meals program, we have at a central level the ministry in charge of national education. I am not going to outline uh, the details of their role because that would be too long, but we must uh, mention that the ministry is a key um, stakeholder in the operation of the school meals program. And we also have a structure that was created at the level of the Ministry of National Education in order to monitor and coordinate all actions at the level of uh, this uh, school meals program, which is the DAM. SSE with a specific uh, uh, means for schools and this structure is in charge of coordinating the whole set of activities at uh, the level of communes and at the level of uh, school meals. We also have uh, the provincial authority for preschool, primary and non-formal education at the level of provinces, which coordinates uh, all activities in order to make sure that uh, what is uh, taken on board is actually implemented uh, in practice. And we also have the circumscription for uh, based uh, education, which is closer to the uh, communes and that supports a better operation of uh, school meals. And we also have the ministry in charge of finances that uh, normally has to make a timely transfer to communes, enabling them to purchase uh, the food. And we have the ministry that also in charge of territorial uh, administration, the, the ministry in charge of public health, and especially the public, uh, the national public health laboratory that guarantees uh, the adequacy of uh, the food, uh, making sure that uh, the, pro the, the food that is provided is quality products. At a centralized level, we have communes. At a decentralized level, we have communes. The state to transfer the funds to communes, and they are in charge of purchasing uh, the food and, making, and of making that food available. And uh, likewise, at the level of uh, communities in schools, well, they are in charge of uh, adhering to the or making sure that, that uh, uh, school cafeterias work adequately at a school level. And we also have the parents' uh, associations and uh, the development councils, which are local structures uh, that are in charge of uh, making sure that school canteens operate uh, in accordance with the regulations. And at the level of uh, technical and financial partners, we have the FAO, the CAF and others uh, that uh, 
provide support for the operation of these school canteens. The fourth point are the factors that limit the participation of OPs in institutional uh, markets. Uh, there is no text uh, that uh, that is a ruling text uh, for these local markets. Uh, there are aspects related uh, to different aspects aspects that the low peas are not able to perform like other stakeholders. So there is also limited financing linked uh, to producer associations. We also face uh, the complexities of uh, related to public bids. And another aspect are the challenges that we must highlight uh, in order to enable family farmers to, to truly participate in the provision of products uh, to these school canteens. First of all, we need to increase uh, the participation of uh, these uh, markets. We find uh, that products uh, purchased from uh, producer associations represent 50%, but if we increase that share, well, we would be able to offer quality products uh, to students. We must also institutionalize uh, public uh, procurement or institutional procurement uh, via a law. We have a decision uh, by the Prime Minister that implies uh, that all institutions, even uh, school canteens, uh, may receive uh, local products and may be supplied by these OPs. That is a decision by the Prime Minister, but uh, stakeholders believe that a law could indeed uh, reinforce the actions of OP, and we must uh, uh, establish a dialogue and greater coordination of stakeholders in the territory. We must review taxes and uh, review control and quality analysis. Uh, uh, tools. We must uh, review uh, review this and increase uh, the budgets for school canteens. Now, what are the strategies that we need to develop in order to um, promote uh, interinstitutional coordination? Well, what do we have done and that we can share is an economy at a regional level, what we call regional frameworks, uh, uh, coordination uh, frameworks for different stakeholders, uh, stakeholders uh, that related to demand, the NGOs and uh, producer groups uh, that have the products. Uh, the, this is uh, territorial stakeholders, so the structure of the state, NGOs, universities that operate at a regional level. And they have implemented this framework enabling stakeholders uh, to come together and to find solutions uh, in order to easily provide these products at a territorial level. The second element is that we have implemented a country animation group about uh, local consumption. This was implemented in collaboration with the French Committee for International Solidarity. And this group uh, was implemented in Burkina Faso, in Togo, Benin, Senegal. And the idea is to facilitate and to share experiences between countries and to get to know how each country is uh, tackling the issue of school meals in each country. We have we hold regional workshops in order to discuss uh, the aspects uh, related to school meals in Senegal, in Togo, in Benin, and in Burkina Faso. We hold workshops where we exchange uh, uh, ideas at a national and international level on the operation of uh, school canteens. The third element is that we've implemented a follow-up uh, monitoring for the school uh, canteens. In each region, we need a committee to guarantee what is being done there. These are stakeholders from the civil society and uh, from the agencies implementing these uh, monitoring and follow-up devices. We have annual meetings with the various stakeholders to discuss the management and operation of uh, school canteens, see what did work, what did not work, what is that we need to request at the national or local level so that we can do that every year so that we can have a view of what uh, uh, each uh, stakeholder. This is what I had for you in terms of the experience of the Confederation of Farmers in Burkina Faso. If you have questions, please do not hesitate. 
In 15 minutes, of course, I cannot go into the tiny details, but I can answer your questions and offer additional information on the experience in Burkina Faso. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob, Jacob for your presentation. It's a very interesting presentation, learning the experience, not only of uh, such a different region from Latin America, but, but also having the experience from a different group of a stakeholder, in the case of the implementation of a school meals, which is the organizations of family partners. It's really interesting on the experience uh, you had uh, on these organizations and support family farmers uh, that uh, were in a situation that although they had uh, different tools and policies, there was a challenge to reach the markets, which means the importance of connecting supply and demand, which is some of the properties of these school meals programs. In this case, we see that uh, uh, you try to find a, 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 a demand for this supply, access to credit, for instance. It's always important to consider, though, the other uh, side of the coin, where to put, where to allocate this uh, product, what markets are available, where this is where public procurement and school meals program uh, rise as a solution. There are many situations here. We have seen the, the opposite, where we have a market for family farmers, but these uh, are not, uh, do not have policies to strengthen the production capacity of family farming to meet these uh, demands, which means that a successful program of public procurement and, and uh, school meals is not only having this specific uh, meeting point, but also a process going from seeding all the way down feeding of students and how to deal with the peculiar specific characteristics and that will be um, that will uh, uh, show how successful these initiatives could be thank you mr jacob we will now have presentation by alida aibe ortega she's the head of the territorial unit of cali warma and kelly evelyn waman soto she's assistant manager of the uh, agricultural development sharing uh, the experience of peru in Huancayo and the cali one uh, Cali Warma program. Yeli and Alida, welcome. Yes, uh, good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes, loud and clear. Good morning. It's a pleasure having uh, having you with us. So you have 15 minutes uh, for your presentation. We'll let you know when you all have uh, three minutes left. Now it's clear. Bueno, voy a empezar, voy a okay, let me start. Mi nombre es Kelly Evelyn um, Guaman Soto, Kelly soy Evelyn subgerente de desarrollo agropecuario de la Municipalidad Provincial de Huancabelica. Quiero presentar esta experiencia que particularmente como profesional ha llenado bastante expectativa eh, en mí, Met desde mi desarrollo, the, y, bueno, en la municipalidad, uh, and, uh, a medida que se ha ido desarrollando e implementando este proceso. As this has been, uh, as a Un momento, por favor, no puedo continuar con... Bear Ahora sí. Me, Voy a presentar el programa municipal que, sea, municipal que tiene un nombre y un apellido en quechua, que es nuestra called... lengua materna en la región de Huancabelica, el programa municipal Allin Miku y Achanapa, que significa traducido al español which, uh, comer bien para aprender. Eh, esto a través de la entrega de productos frescos a niños y niñas de compras directas a la agricultura familiar, a nuestros pequeños productores. Este programa municipal ya se ha institucionalizado 
ejemplo, a través de una ordenanza provincial para su cumplimiento. Y esto se ha logrado en un trabajo conjunto con la Comisión de Desarrollo Económico de los, del Consejo Municipal, quienes han entendido y adoptado esta iniciativa y la quieren hacer sostenible en el tiempo para que no solo esta gestión pueda asignar los recursos que se requiere para la entrega de productos frescos que van a complementar los productos eh, que hace entrega ya el programa Handiwarma a nivel nacional. Como ustedes pueden observar, estas imágenes son de los productos que nosotros eh, entregamos a las instituciones educativas beneficiadas en nuestra autoridad el señor alcalde, uh, the, quien ha recibido mayor, con bastante predisposición has, uh, esta propuesta been, uh, y la ha hecho suya, y es por ello que se institucionaliza y se asignan los recursos and, and that's, that's que se requieren para su implementación. A la izquierda, nuestro productor de papa nativa, side, don Alberto Montes, de la Alberto comunidad de Pumaramba, quien viene abasteciendo uh, con la papa nativa, diversa, multicolor, rica en nutrientes, proteínas, vitaminas, que son finalmente consumidos por nuestros niños uh, que han sido beneficiados, vienen children, siendo beneficiados uh, boys and a través girls de la implementación been, uh, de este programa municipal Uh, allí en Mikuy, Yachanapa, eh, nosotros al iniciar esta gestión When el año pasado, en 2023, eh, pudimos eh, percibir como we desafíos o problemas los indicadores que hacía el reporte del Ministerio de Salud respecto a la prevalencia de anemia y desnutrición crónica infantil en nuestra región de Huancabelica, donde los índices superaban el 45% de nuestros niños que presenta desnutrición o anemia. ¿No? En el 2020 esta, esta cifra se había incrementado y para el 2022 aún mucho mayor, ¿no? El número de los indicadores que se reportaban a través de los monitoreos que realizaba el Ministerio de Salud eran cifras alarmantes. En ese sentido es que se, se considera atender como el gobierno local por una responsabilidad social estas cifras. Por otro lado, en Huancabelica, el 70% de la población se dedica a la agricultura y la ganadería de los cuales la mayoría and, uh, son productores familiares, uh, productores pequeños que cuentan con parcelas mínimas para la producción. Eh, esto es algo que representa una desventaja that, uh, en comparación, a, en comparación a las, uh, al tipo de producción que desarrollan regiones vecinas como Junín, por ejemplo, uh, o Ica, que son agroexportadores. En Huancabelica, nuestros productores se dedican a la producción de la agricultura familiar Produce en menor escala, prácticamente en su mayoría para autoconsumo. For self También hemos podido identificar also, nuestras oportunidades y de estas oportunidades la, nacen las alternativas de solución para poder atender estas dos dificultades, estos dos problemas phases, que inicialmente identificamos. We El departamento de Huancabelica está situado en la zona Belica central de nuestro país. En, eh, en Perú es un departamento considerado uh, con mayor pobreza a nivel nacional. As, uh, Somos una región que alberga siete provincias y 102 distritos, eh, en, pero dentro de estas within, dificultades que tenemos como región, también tenemos region, oportunidades. Somos una región mega diversa que have, tiene uh, distintos pisos ecológicos y la producción de frutas se da con bastante posibilidad para poder desarrollar en mayor escala la producción de truchas, somos una región que cuenta con recursos hídricos que garantizan la disponibilidad de recursos hídricos a nivel nacional. Contamos con dos hidroeléctricas en nuestra región que abastece con energía eléctrica a regiones principales como es nuestra capital de Lima. Contamos con recursos de flora y fauna bastante diversos con una diversidad genética y biológica que consideramos que es una oportunidad fundamental para poder, poder desarrollar la implementación de este programa municipal. 
¿Qué estrategia hemos podido nosotros implementar para poder lograr que este programa municipal se ponga en marcha? Hemos eh, considerado que la lucha contra la anemia y la desnutrición crónica infantil no solo debe ser atendida por el sector salud, sino esta debe ser una responsabilidad compartida por los gobiernos locales, distritales y provinciales y también por el gobierno regional para poder disminuir estos indicadores negativos y por ello es necesario trabajar en articulación interinstitucional no solo con las instituciones que forman parte del Estado, sino también con las instituciones del sector público, con instituciones como las ONGs que están trabajando hace muchos años con productores familiares que vienen atendiendo de alguna manera en comunidades, en distritos localizados, esta necesidad de reducir los índices de anemia y de seguir. En ese sentido, nos hemos Anemia reunido so siempre con we, el apoyo de la FAO, uh, que ha sido un FAO, soporte bastante fuerte. El programa Jaliwarma, es que es el Fondo de Cooperación para el Desarrollo Social, el gobierno regional de Guadalajara a través del programa Agrario, el grupo Yanapai, que es una ONG que viene trabajando con los productores de papa nativa, maíz y algunos frutales en nuestra región de Huancabelica, con el Servicio Nacional de Sanidad Agraria, en Perú uh, y siempre esto ha sido liderado por la municipalidad este es un programa nuestro que no This tendría our funcionamiento that, uh, en implementación al día de hoy si no hubiéramos tenido que articular y sumar esfuerzos cada uno desde su institución so, desde su sector from, uh, these, uh, con un compromiso eh, eh, que se ha venido desarrollando uh, en todo este eh, tiempo que venimos implementando el programa. Uh, Yo quiero compartirles de qué manera cada institución ha venido eh, sumando y aportando has, uh, en este programa it, municipal. Has, has made, made en primer lugar, bueno, la FAO que ha sido un FAO first, bastante uh, eh, importante para poder support, fortalecer las capacidades en primer lugar, de los profesionales que trabajamos inmersos en la agricultura. Hay que manejar un mismo lenguaje, una misma comunicación, un mismo objetivo para trabajar en forma paralela a todas las instituciones y el aporte de la FAO con el desarrollo de las escuelas de campo que hemos desarrollado primero para profesionales y luego para productores ha sido fundamental porque ambos, todas las instituciones alineadas al trabajo que se desarrolla en la agricultura, hemos manejado y hemos llegado en consenso a un mismo lenguaje que debemos trasladar a los productores. En segundo lugar, las ONG, que son fundamentales por el tema de que ellos ya trabajan con las, con las organizaciones de productores, con los productores familiares, con unidades productivas ya identificadas, ha sido fundamental, porque ellos ya manejaban una comunicación más fluida. Y nosotros hemos aprovechado de esa comunicación para poder articular este lenguaje de la agricultura familiar. Porque en nuestro país es un proceso que recién se viene eh, fortaleciendo, que recién se viene implementando, que recién eh, lo que es el Ministerio de Desarrollo Agrario y Riego viene Uh, irrigation and agriculture Entonces, development. Nosotros It's, consideramos uh, que desde Huancabelica estamos to, to, un paso más adelante porque estamos so fortaleciendo no solo las capacidades de los profesionales, sino también y en, en gran medida de los productores but, uh, but de la agricultura familiar. Of, uh, el SENASA también ha sido un soporte Senasa bastante fuerte porque hay documentos, metodologías que ellos han venido desarrollando, pero que no eran muy difundidas. Las buenas prácticas agrícolas, que ahora sí es de conocimiento de productores familiares con quienes venimos trabajando. Y a esto nosotros como gobierno local nos hemos sumado desarrollando o impulsando este fortalecimiento de capacidades, pero de manera más práctica, con el desarrollo de intercambio de experiencias en los mismos productores de la agricultura familiar que vienen desarrollando 
desarrollando emprendimientos rurales exitosos. Entonces estamos ampliando los conocimientos, estamos fortaleciendo esta agricultura familiar en nuestra provincia y región de Huancabelica con actividades, constituciones que suman el compromiso y los esfuerzos y estamos viendo que los resultados son eh, que se empezaba de poquito pero están teniendo mayor, mayor esfuerzo, mayor resultado. Successful. Eh, en esta presentación, en esta diapositiva, this, uh, yo slide, quiero eh, a través I, de estas imágenes uh, un poquito this, uh, detallar snapshot. de cómo Let debe desarrollarse esta, how, esta propuesta, la implementación de nuestro proposal, programa municipal. Hay en Miku y como vemos en las imágenes, en las diapositivas, en la parte de slide, arriba, Primero, fortaleciendo nuestras capacidades, entendiendo, manejando un solo lenguaje, no integrando estrategias innovadoras y tecnología para poder mejorar la eficiencia, ¿no? Porque cuando empezamos a implementar este programa municipal, nos dimos con la grata eh, sorpresa de que la capacidad de producción de nuestros productores era mínima, la demanda superaba la oferta. Entonces, ¿de qué manera podemos garantizar la disponibilidad de los alimentos frescos? Era pues fortaleciendo el nivel productivo de nuestros productores de la agricultura familiar. Y eso es un acompañamiento que nosotros desarrollamos durante todo el año como sugerencia de desarrollo agropecuario, incentivando siempre eh, el uso de abonos orgánicos, rescatando uh, la tecnología ancestral que antes siempre se ha desarrollado uh, en Boca de Lica, a nivel familiar, es un proceso de acompañamiento constante en el que nosotros estamos eh, eh, presentes y con la única finalidad de que los niños puedan eh, consumir, Children, puedan recuperar hábitos de consumo eh, have, saludables, uh, porque a veces en casa el consumo uh, de alimentos home, sanos se ha reducido por una cuestión de repente de economía, ¿no? que es más, uh, más este, económico uh, comprar un kilo de fideos que no aporta mucho. Eh, It's muchos, buying a kilogram of pasta, muchos de los requerimientos nutricionales de un niño provide, a comprar un huevo, un huevo orgánico, un huevo de, de corral, eh, que tiene un costo mucho, un poquito más elevado. ¿no? Uh, egg, y todo este proceso nosotros expensive. hemos identificado que es so fundamental have, uh, poder fortalecer a nuestros productores de la agricultura familiar en su formalización, porque para lograr este proceso de compra de la agricultura familiar por parte del sector público, por parte del Estado, hay que cumplir con ciertos requisitos. Al inicio era un temor para nuestros productores poder eh, formalizarse, poder tener un RUC, que es un registro único de contribuyente, pero estamos en ese proceso de formalización donde Nuestros But now tres productores we are doing that. que se han visto Our beneficiados durante este año para poder entregar estos productos frescos y a tiempo. Adicional a esto, estamos viendo como gobierno local. Quedan siete minutos eh, yeah, para terminar. Es casi minutes, la última, última presentación que tengo. The, eh, hemos podido lograr que nuestros productores tengan el sello de la agricultura familiar del Perú. Están certificados y tienen un código único nacional. They Entonces, have a ese también ha sido un proceso que se está trabajando desde el año pasado. Y al día de hoy podemos mencionar con alegría que uno de nuestros productores ya tiene ese certificado de la agricultura familiar del Perú. Nuestros otros dos productores, así como los productores adicionales con los que venimos trabajando, están en ese proceso de certificación. Bueno, es todo lo que he okay, querido that's, compartir uh, that's con, what con I had ustedes. For you. Uh, eh, voy a darle pase a la licenciada now, uh, Lida Ortega para que también pueda Lida, eh, manifestar la experiencia Ortega. que han venido trabajando con She nosotros. No sin antes eh, mencionarles, ¿no? De que that, en un proceso de evaluación uh, anual que se in ha an hecho, en 2021 se han asignado 4.870 soles para beneficiar a 11 instituciones educativas. 
million soles and in 2023, 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 74,000 
el consumo de, para el consumo de alimentos frescos de la agricultura familiar para complementar los productos no perecibles que entregan Caliwarma en cada una de las instituciones educativas de la región. Son productos completamente balanceados, pero sabemos que es muy importante para mejorar los hábitos alimentarios en la, el consumo de alimentos frescos también de parte de nuestros escolares. Y de fomentar la agricultura familiar, que ya es una ley desde el año 2021 farming, en el Perú. También in Peru. Eh, tenemos, fomentamos, We also igual promote, como lo manifestado uh, la, as, uh, la, nuestra representante de la municipalidad con la que estamos presentando esta experiencia, los distintos costos de comercialización hacia uh, las instituciones uh, educativas para garantizar uh, la calidad y la inocuidad. Por otro lado, también se tiene promovido And uh, we also promote uh, vegetable pro para patches para in tener y programar escuelas sostenibles. In order to este es un desafío achieve sustainable tanto para schools. la Now, municipalidad como la provincia de Huancabelica que lo viene ya ejecutando y también para Cali Warma. Lo hacemos a través de con el aporte, con el soporte uh, técnico y el apoyo de la FAO desde el inicio. Of, uh, the FAO, uh, that we have received from the very actualmente beginning. estamos uh, At present, llevando un curso, dando asistencia técnica a un grupo de docentes de la región Huancabelica en coordinación con la Dirección Regional de Agricultura de Educación de Huancabelica. Ahí tenemos algunas listas donde se ha dado una primera capacitación, una primera asistencia a nuestros docentes de la región para que luego haga una réplica en las demás provincias. Y tenemos la última foto de todo el equipo con los docentes de Huancabelica en, la, en el fortalecimiento de los huertos escolares con miras a tener escuelas sostenibles para mejorar la cadena de suministro de la calidad de inocuidad. Sabemos que tenemos una brecha grande en términos de sistemas agroalimentarios referidos al enfoque de inocuidad y calidad que requieren ser atendidos. Se promueve la agroecología para rescatar las, las prácticas sabias y ancestrales uh, que tenemos en cada uh, espacio uh, geográfico de nuestro país um, para obtener alimentos con estándares medioambientales en la producción primaria. También se implementan establecimientos de procesamiento primario de acuerdo uh, al Codex Alimentario y productores se, los productores se convierten en proveedores del Estado become, uh, a cumplir, al cumplir los requisitos administrativos que se les exige y como ya se ha demostrado en la anterior presentación. Se minimizan los peligros, una correcta gestión de riesgos desde el origen de la producción hasta el servicio alimentario. También tenemos el impacto de una buena gestión de la relación territorial. Este impacto se logra gracias a esta estrategia de articular en el espacio tanto con los gobiernos locales Specific space como in, with como institución uh, del Estado, como local programa de alimentación escolar, que no teníamos a state, uh, las competencias para poder adquirir uh, directamente los productos, that we pero didn't sí have the hay to la, buena, these la voluntad directly. política But, uh, de los gobiernos uh, locales de poder uh, apoyar estas iniciativas uh, on the part también of local debe de, in order to support these favorecer initiatives. la agricultura familiar uh, que ya está normal en nuestro país. Family farming that is already regulated in our country. En, este, en esta gestión de articulación, in, in, podemos eh, de decir, eh, presentar en esta oportunidad nuestra, nuestro, present, uh, nuestra articulación más uh, grande que tenemos, con mayor uh, tiempo desde el año 2021, con la Municipalidad Provincial de Huancabelica. También se, lo, se ha logrado compromiso con otros gobiernos locales, como o, o provinciales y distritales de la región. District, uh, y, different districts y, uh, in the se region. establecieron también directivas a tanto a nivel nacional como a nivel regional que nos sirven de herramientas para formalizar a los productores familiares. Formalize, uh, Las instituciones gubernamentales eh, 
las organizaciones de la sociedad civil y otros actores como las ONGs y los programas sociales y en este caso la, la presencia de la, de la FAO como asistencia técnica y soporte a este proceso nos permite, generar, pues, permite que las, uh, los gobiernos locales puedan generar políticas públicas y fortalecer las capacidades de los, de los gobiernos locales para la compra de productos. Eh, esta, esta for, este fortalecimiento Now, de organización de, a la organización de los productores familiares of, uh, para cumplir los requisitos de calidad y de calidad, que es un tema que no está muy desarrollado en la región y que es uh, para nosotros sumamente importante porque tenemos una población is, uh, altamente vulnerable. Y además logra, se logra también que las instituciones and, uh, educativas adopten buenas prácticas de manera para la alimentación saludable. Uh, for a en, ahora hemos podido ver desde la provincia de Huancabelica cómo se ha venido implementando todo este proceso y a partir del año 21 y 22, como la misma de nuestra compañera de la municipalidad, From the municipality, ha habido un incremento en la inversión y an esto gracias a la voluntad política para, para las compras de alimentos frescos a nivel local. Y esto podemos resaltar a partir del año 23 y 24, las asignaciones que han destinado el gobierno local han sido cada vez mayores. En el año 23 tenemos una inversión de 53.998 soles y esta se ha Prácticamente podríamos afirmar que se ha triplicado uh, en el año 2024. Entonces, so, so this has, uh, increased la, este proceso 2024, de articulación, es, esta estrategia this, uh, de articulación uh, para nuestras compras locales es, es muy valiosa. Is, uh, para ello trabajamos sen, uh, con sensibilización, we were, uh, con asistencia técnica en temas de inocuidad y calidad, conjuntamente uh, con la FAO, quality, para la guía, la, la, el programa también elaboró en, una, en un inicio antes de que salga la ley, la guía de alimentos frescos que permite la, facilita la compra de alimentos frescos, promover los, precios, los, se promover los precios justos para la compra de alimentos frescos y la formalización de nuestros pequeños agricultores, formalización de los agricultores familiares para la venta de Estado para el, a la venta a otros mercados and como to los other productos ecológicos. And Yo creo que es eh, sumamente importante para nuestra I región desarrollar este tipo de experiencias porque nos permite estar con llegar It a todos nuestros agricultores o pequeños agricultores, porque como manifestábamos también, Huancabelica no tiene Huancabelica grandes, una agricultura grande, mayor, sino es una agricultura pequeña, familiar, porque las condiciones geográficas family no los permiten así. Uh, en, esta, en esta oportunidad, con la experiencia de la Municipalidad Provincial de Huancabelica, se ha favorecido a organizaciones de productores familiares de distintos como Mariscal Cáceres, Acoria y Acobamba Paucará, que se ha distribuido papa palta, huevos, papa nativa, también verduras y hortalizas, y lo que buscamos es establecer modelos de escuelas sostenibles que puedan ser visibilizadas y reconocidas a fin de que sean replicadas en todo nuestro territorio. Yo creo que es una experiencia muy importante para nuestra región que nos permite desarrollar la tanto la implementación de la alimentación escolar que sea complementada con alimentos frescos que garantice la salud y el desarrollo adecuado de nuestros niños y niñas que permita el acceso a la alimentación como un derecho universal en nuestra región y en todas nuestras escuelas de servicio público. También se hace, se cuenta con el, con la articulación con la Dirección Regional de Salud, con SENASA, con las instancias que garantizan que podamos entregar 
uh, y favorecer a nuestros niños en su derecho a la alimentación con alimentos saludables, nutritivos, principalmente de la zona, con pertinencia cultural. Creo que esta experiencia va creciendo. Como Caliwarma nos sentimos, tenemos 12 años ya de trabajo en el país como alimentación escolar. Y creo uh, que vamos, se va creciendo gracias a esta, a esta forma de trabajo articulado, of, uh, this way uh, of, uh, reforzando la ley de agricultura familiar para que sea efectiva, mejorando sus, uh, sus criterios de, so uh, legales para la acción de las compras locales. Y hay una buena disposición de, la, de toda la población, de la, de la comunidad educativa, de poder apoyar whole educational community in terms of providing support both when it comes uh, to the purchase of these fresh products and uh, for the preparation of the food and also uh, strengthening bio uh, ha pasado el patches. tiempo que tenía disponible, pero de todas maneras estamos dispuestos a todas las a presentar uh, course, esta experiencia uh, a, nivel are, um, a nivel de esta red de alimentación this, uh, sostenible, uh, eh, presentar esta experiencia de Huancabelita uh, y present, uh, poder resolver cualquier pregunta and, uh, able, al, luego de que concluya la presentación. Muchísimas Following gracias por su atención. Thank Vamos a estar eh, atentos a las preguntas o inquietudes que puedan hacernos respecto al, al programa, a la, las relaciones con los gobiernos locales y la coordinación familiar. Local Muchas gracias a todos farmers. los Thank participantes. Much, uh, Muchísimas gracias eh, Alida y Kelly por sus presentaciones. Nos queda muy claro con, con ambas que se necesita una verdadera participación de las partes interesadas y de los actores locales en el diseño y la adecuación de los sistemas de alimentación escolar para poder desarrollar estas estrategias de manera conjunta y que puedan responder de manera efectiva a las necesidades y las prácticas de cada territorio, como la articulación territorial y la participación de estos actores que conocen los desafíos específicos, permiten adecuar las soluciones a cada uno de los contextos, como la riqueza de los territorios se va transformando también en una fortaleza para poder desarrollar estos programas a nivel de los municipios. Nuevamente, surge con todo esto el Once tema de la articulación eh, interinstitucional. Inter Como bien mencionaban eh, las colegas, no solamente de parte de, 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 del sector público, sino también, por ejemplo, en las organizaciones de sociedad civil, las organizaciones no gubernamentales que que sobre todo tienen una presencia importante a nivel de los territorios y cuyas reflexiones y perspectivas eh, siempre son clave para poder lograr traducir los, estos programas a las realidades eh, territoriales y conectar a todos los actores que forman parte de estos engranajes que permiten el éxito de estas iniciativas. Eh, a partir de este momento vamos a pasar a una Now, sección muy breve en función del tiempo very, very short, de preguntas uh, y respuestas. Eh, tenemos dos, re dos preguntas que have, vamos a realizar uh, a todos nuestros panelistas y aquí eh, quienes eh, consideren que quieren eh, responder and, uh, a ellas, por favor, eh, nos pueden levantar la mano y le vamos a dar so dos minutos a cada uno. That, uh, hands, eh, las preguntas son las siguientes. En primer lugar, nos preguntan eh, si es que en estos programas de eh, alimentación uh, escolar o compras públicas, uh, si el, conta el contacto uh, es realizado de manera directa con los agricultores familiares o si es que en general farmers, existen intermediarios, por ejemplo, eh, cooperativas uh, o empresas a nivel local o algún otro tipo de asociación que en el fondo facilite este contacto. Y la segunda pregunta tiene que ver con eh, la diferencia de costos, que significa el favorecer o, o enfatizar las compras al agricultor familiar eh, versus otras fuentes de proveedores eh, alternativas. Eh, no sé a quién quisiera comenzar eh, dando respuesta a estas preguntas, pero Karim con la cámara encendida, así que le voy a pasar la palabra. Think, Karine Adelante, Karine. For the floor. So you have Adelante, the floor, Karine. Eh, então, vou falar un um poquito sobre el contacto con el agricultor familiar. 
como eu mencionei, a gente, o ministério responsável pela execução da alimentação escolar aqui no Brasil é o Ministério da Educação. Então, a compra tem que ser feita diretamente com o agricultor, seja ele um agricultor familiar individual, ele venda sozinho porque ele produz uma quantidade pequena e vende sozinho, seja ele por meio de uma organização, mas aí são organizações como cooperativas ou associações que são compostas apenas por agricultores familiares. Mas é bom a gente ter clareza que é importante a participação de outras instituições, como, por exemplo, as secretarias locais de agricultura, porque eles ajudam os agricultores a se prepararem para produção, eles ofertam assistência técnica aos produtores, então há aqui que se pensar num trabalho em conjunto com vários setores, mas que a aquisição não tem intermediários. Não é como um supermercado, não é como uma venda, é direto com o agricultor com quem produz o alimento. Em relação aos custos, que também foi perguntado, é, a aquisição da agricultura familiar aqui no Brasil ela é feita com um olhar para a produção local. Como é que se estabelece o preço de quanto vai pagar por aquele alimento? O gestor do município ele faz uma pesquisa de preço em pelo menos três mercados locais. Então, ele vai verificar o preço do tomate, por exemplo, em três locais e faz um preço médio. E é esse preço médio que ele vai pagar ao agricultor familiar. É uma lógica um pouco diferente das compras convencionais. Eu acho que na pergunta até citava isso. Qual é a diferença da compra convencional? Porque na compra convencional, o foco principal é o menor valor. É o menor preço para a administração pública. Ela considera, obviamente, a qualidade do que está sendo entregue, o prazo para a entrega, né? mas assim, o principal é o preço. Na agricultura familiar, não. O principal não é o preço. O preço ele vai surgir a partir de uma pesquisa, mas o principal é que o agricultor seja local. E se ele for local, indígena, quilombola, ele tem prioridade. Então, a lógica é um pouco diferente em relação a indigenous or quilombola, uh, well, that would be the logic, and that is different uh, to conventional procurement. Muchísimas gracias, Karine, por tu respuesta. Thank Kelly. you, Karine, for eh, your answer. Kelly, yes, I'd like to share our experience a little bit. We wanted to prioritize regionales. procurement uh, from regional producers, in other words, Uh, produces in the region of Juan Cabelica, and thus we have identified producers in accordance with their capability to supply in view of the demand that uh, we had. And uh, as a result of their own needs, uh, producers have had uh, to, form, uh, uh, to group themselves with the neighboring producers in order to guarantee the amounts uh, that were demanded. And now, in terms of price, There is a regional agricultural authority at the region of the region of Guacavelica that uh, researches prices per product at the level of local market. And therefore, um, as, a, as Karine just mentioned, uh, it is with that, with that price that we are able to establish an average price. And on top of that, uh, we have added all the logistical aspects, uh, the transport of products uh, from the productive unit to the educational institution, because that is a cost that the producer does not take into consideration uh, when it comes to establishing an average price for their products. And in addition, we have also uh, considered uh, an issue of uh, usefulness, because we want the producer to understand understand uh, that uh, local sí, products are indeed a source of guaranteed uh, income. It can generate uh, a, it can finance a labor force local. in their economy in their Entonces, community, and thus it uh, strengthens uh, the local economy, and thus we have, we have had to establish uh, prices Entonces, that are greater sí, than uh, local market trabajo, prices, and that is the way in which we have developed this work. Our producers are uh, from uh, the region of Huancavelica, and thus we also want to recover the habit of uh, consuming local products as something that had been es lost uh, over time. That is what I wanted to share with you. Perfecto, Kelly. Muchas gracias. 
Eh, Good, que perfect. Uh, Kelly, thank you. Mano, no sé si, uh, eh, Alida, si I don't know. Would you like to interject? Sí, muchas gracias. Sí, para, thank you. Yes. Para manifestar que el programa Say Cali Warma de Cali Warma, compra uh, productos, buys, la canasta uh, de productos para toda products, para la institución uh, educativa. Atendemos mediante productos que se preparan en la misma institución educativa. Uh, Al hacer esta school. compra a nivel nacional, la hacemos this, una vez al año, uh, eh, se promueve a, year, a, lo, a la agricultura familiar y a la agricultura farming. local a los and pequeños productores nuestros porque se da una, un puntaje adicional a los proveedores que en su canasta completa de alimentos presen, presentan productos locales producción de la agricultura familiar o productores locales, pequeños productores locales. Y por otro lado, también cuando se hace la coordinación con, las, con los pequeños agricultores que se les visita a los agricultores de la de la agricultura familiar, we, we visit hay un contacto farmers. directo que va contact. a sus uh, centros de producción, como lo manifestó uh, la ingeniera Kelly, uh, like y es Kelly con el objetivo de promover, in sobre todo to promote, en, en nuestro caso, de ver el tema de inocuidad, ¿no? porque tenemos uh, una población safety. altamente vulnerable. This is a highly vulnerable fecha, population. Apostamos también por los precios, uh, and, uh, por los, we go, la formalización de los pequeños productores we, para que tengan ellos el precio so justo para promover su desarrollo como agricultores familiares. Eso era farmers. lo que quería compartir, That's, agregar uh, a lo uh, expuesto. Muchas gracias. Add, uh, thank you. Muchas, eh, muchas, muchas gracias, Alida, por tu intervención. Y, y doy la palabra a Nashla también, And quien now, acaba de Nashla, hacer su mano. Muy rápidamente, gracias, María. Un gusto escuchar a todas las presentaciones. Thank you, María. It's a pleasure to listen to all those presentations. And where is uh, FAO support? Por favor. That, uh, el otro Brazil, tema es que es uh, muy importante an, an, an todo el tiempo eh, recordar que tenemos desafíos grandes y especialmente me gustaría llamar la atención para el desafío de buscar la intersectorialidad permanente. Yo creo que en todas las intersectorialidades es más que evidente. Y si no logramos dialogar con las mujeres de cultura y tratar bien el tema de los precios, de compras, etc., mapeo, producciones, organizaciones, no avanzamos muy bien. Entonces, vamos a demostrar que este es un tema desafiante para nosotros en la alimentación y que contamos con todos los apoyos posibles en todos los lugares all the possible support at all levels in order to achieve the goal. Thank you, Maria, and congratulations, Karina, Alida, Kelly, Plinio, Jacob, and all the colleagues in the session. Thank you. A pleasure to see you again. Muchas gracias, Nashla, y muchas gracias you, eh, igualmente a todos nuestros panelistas y a todos los participantes por las interesantes preguntas que nos plantearon en esta sesión. Y bueno, por supuesto, los panelistas que estuvieron muy abiertos a compartir con todos y todas sus valiosas experiencias y conocimientos sobre el inmenso aporte que son los programas de alimentación escolar y cómo estos representan una interesante oportunidad para mejorar de manera sustantiva eh, el acceso a mercados por parte de Access to market, uh, from eh, para entregarnos unas breves palabras de cierre, tenemos closing, con nosotros a Pedro Guareto, eh, quien es el coordinador Guareto. de proyectos He y un especialista regional eh, de agricultura familiar en la oficina de FAO para América at, uh, Latina y FAO Adelante, Pedro. So, Pedro. Gracias, María Ignacia. Gracias, colegas. Thank eh, you, María Ignacia de, de and Carlos. And we have a Luis Petuski, unfortunately, a connection problem. Con nosotros. Quisiera agradecer a todos y todos que se han conectado con nosotros para acompañar esta
el armado y implementación de este espacio de diálogo. ¿no? Esta segunda edición together. para nosotros this, uh, fue muy second, importante porque uh, this, uh, el año pasado is donde vimos last year. Eh, una discusión inicial sobre el tema de registros, ahora and, pasamos uh, a enfocar uh, uh, en las soluciones que los diferentes países han encontrado pa, para fortalecer la participación de los en los diferentes mecanismos de compras públicas e institucionales uh, y obviamente eso se vincula uh, a, a todo lo que discutimos el año pasado. ¿no? Which los registros para para qué la caracterización del sector, para qué es para la elaboración de políticas diferenciadas de que fortalezcan la agricultura familiar. No, a lo largo de esta edición específicamente so, pudimos conocer experiencias de diversos actores, países, y nos hablaron no solo de cómo las compras públicas representan oportunidades para el sector de la agricultura familiar, es una oportunidad para las familias de las principales innovaciones en las recientes estrategias de erradicación de la hambre y la pobreza en América Latina y otras regiones de este mundo. Pero también pudimos ver un poco de las complejidades que hay para comenzar a implementar los diferentes programas de compras públicas. Cuando implementamos estos varios programas de compras públicas. Algunas otras reflexiones que sacamos de esta edición del sitio, donde nuevamente tenemos que We're again, crear un espacio de compartir experiencias y no solo share experiencias, sino not only desafíos uh, de botellas success stories, que fueron but siendo aprendidos y, and, 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 and failures, y donde uh, los diferentes casos que vimos pudieron presentar algunas soluciones cases, innovadoras, uh, offer some eh, además de, de crear sinergias uh, que permiten impulsar la eficiencia y la equidad eh, en esos procesos, ¿no? Equity y, y creo que de esta edición lo clave and y que hemos escuchado en las tres ediciones pasa por reconocer three, el rol que uh, tiene la agricultura familiar uh, eh, en el fortalecimiento del tejido socioeconómico en el país, ¿no? Para no, responder a esa última pregunta que tuvimos sobre el tema de los precios, question, no es solo una cuestión de precios, sino una cuestión del beneficio price, que hay uh, económico y social en los diferentes territorios rurales a implementar iniciativas de implementar en este caso, ¿no? Eh, y cómo este well sector as, uh, aporta no solo alimentos de calidad, sino que también sostenibilidad y arraigo cultural a la comunidad. ¿No? Por eso es necesario que haya una inversión That's focalizada en la agricultura familiar que se adecue focus, a las necesidades analysis, y realidades de, la, de los diferentes agricultores. Creo que acá también un, es importante destacar important el contexto y context en los diferentes programas de compra o sea, no hay una receta única I mean, que es necesario no, uh, eh, no, uh, adaptarlo uh, uh, a la complejidad inherente que hay en los diferentes territorios que se requiere que se articulen diversos actores a lo largo de diferentes cadenas productivas diversas instituciones, uh, diversos, diversos sectores chains, para garantizar el éxito de la implementación de los diferentes programas de compras públicas y eso requiere un conocimiento profundo de la institucionalidad en cual los procesos deberán existir ¿no? como diferentes países uh, mencionaron no necesariamente solo la existencia not, de una ley, no necesariamente solo la existencia de una institucionalidad, pero no es importante contar con sistemas de información adecuados, con mecanismos específicos de coordinación intersectorial y desarrollar capacidades institucionales, tanto a nivel público como a nivel de las organizaciones, como a nivel de los territorios rurales. Lo que requiere la voluntad política, porque eso es el primer mensaje que sacamos de la tradición. Es necesaria la uh, política y liderazgo de una comunidad para que podamos liderar de manera eficiente y efectiva los diferentes programas y vincular la agricultura familiar como corresponde a su espacio. ¿no? Eh, y obviamente que, que, que hay un, course, un, un tema que también this, mencionó, uh, that, que no es solo abrir mercados para la agricultura familiar, no, eh, for trabajar con el tema de inclusión de la agricultura familiar en las compras the, públicas, uh, pasa también por generar un entorno que permita a la agricultura familiar a cumplir con los requisitos que, que, que existen como mercados de demanda. Entonces, todo el tema de formar capacidades de anterior a las instituciones y en los agricultores y organizaciones de agricultores es clave y reconocer el rol que tienen las organizaciones de agricultores en este proceso a proveer servicios a sus miembros o permitir que haya un tejido social y económico que atienda a diferentes requisitos y permita fortalecer todo el tema de producción en la agricultura familiar. No, y creo que ya no es un tema específico a la sesión de hoy More specifically today, cerrar, in closing, eh, 
um, en enfoque específico a los the programas de alimentación escolar on the school y cómo meals desde la alimentación escolar y los diferentes programas vemos características uh, únicas que generan este círculo virtuoso donde uh, no solo uh, se garantiza un acceso de mercado no, no, acceso a mercado para la agricultura sino que también farming, asegura el acceso a alimentos saludables diversos y no a los beneficiarios de sus programas safe lo que food, contribuye obviamente eh, de manera simultánea no solo la seguridad alimentaria y nutricional de the los beneficiarios pero que fomentan iniciativas de desarrollo rural inclusivo y, y obviamente nuevamente destacando la, el desafío y la necesidad de la participación de varios factores durante ese proceso creo que por ahí eh, vimos cómo se han desarrollado diferentes mecanismos de acción coordinada a coordinated action mechanisms have been implemented promoting dialogue, promoting cooperation and coordination among the multiple actors. Stakeholders. This is not the last meeting. We will continue to have more of these meetings. And from FAO, we will continue to work in supporting countries in going forward that emphasizes the role of family farming in the process. Uh, to implement differentiated actions for family farming, promoting la innovación, capabilities, innovation, creating the necessary conditions for economic, o sea, social, and political integration from the platform of family farming and the global agenda, such as the, the, the decade for to the multi-stakeholder dialogue. We have a government, representative, civil society, the academia. So this is a democratic uh, space to build a path. Gracias una vez más a todos y todos que Thanks están con nosotros en esta sesión de las dos. Gracias, Nadia, 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 Nadia,